Thank you to the patrons for supporting the channel. Welcome back. Now I haven't covered a FNAF VHS or analog horror video in a while, mainly because there's just so many, and so many that are similar that it would become kind of redundant to keep making videos about them. There are some that are really good, but I just can't cover all of them, and I don't really want to, honestly. I'm trying to branch out a little bit, and making 1200 FNAF VHS videos uh, is not really conducive to that. However, considering I've actually done a voice for this project, and it's pretty much the number one thing everybody has been suggesting uh, I cover since it came out, we're talking about The Walton Files 3. This doesn't mean I'm going to talk about it the same way I used to, where I just basically cover what happened and then give my ideas on the story. I'll still give some ideas of what I think and tell you about the important parts, but I want to go deeper into the history of The Walton Files, the production of Walton Files 3, and things like that. So. Let's get started. I was first introduced to The Walton Files when Martin Walls, the creator, commented on one of my videos. I went to go check it out, and it was pretty small comparatively when you compare it to how huge it's gotten now. I made a video about it, and suddenly both of our videos and channels saw a huge surge. I want to clarify, I don't think that I am somehow the catalyst for all this growth, like somehow my video made it popular. My channel was, and is still not big enough for that, and if you look at the view comparison between our two videos, it's clear that I am not the driving factor. It really is the uniqueness and the quality of the Walton Files that made so many people have a connection to it. Martin Walls began work on the Walton Files after a fan game that he was working on fell through with a similar premise. Taking inspiration from analog horror, Squimpus's FNAF VHS tapes, and the sort of old creepy flash animation style, Martin Walls created the first video, Company Introduction Tape. This was a 10 minute found footage style animated video which was surprisingly long considering the other content in the same genre at the time. There's a lot going on here, but here's what's important. Bonds Burgers was a children's restaurant with animatronics founded by Felix Kranken and Jack Walton. There's also a storage facility for the animatronics located in St. Juana's Forest. We're introduced to the character Sophie and the fact that Jack Walton is missing. We see someone working in the storage facility, but they appear to die in the forest. There would be a little bit of a break here as Martin Walls worked on the next Walton Files video. The series grew in popularity, new voice cast members were added with casting calls, and then it was released, The Walton Files 2, The Relocate Project, this time nearly doubling the original tape's runtime at 17 minutes and 56 seconds. We find out that Felix Kranken has taken over full control of Bond's Burgers after Jack's disappearance, and that there is a project to relocate the restaurant. More employees go to work at St. Juana's storage facility, but only two of the three that enter come out alive. There was also a hidden video that you could find called Lucky You, which confirmed Sophie's connection with Pills and that she is directly related to Jack Walton. Now obviously there were some hidden videos and codes that I haven't talked about here, but I just want to go over the basics. The series blew up even more with plenty of fan content and theories and stuff like that, and everyone was waiting on The Walton Files 3, but that journey was only just beginning. At this point, The Walton Files was probably the biggest FNAF VHS content out there. The finale of Squimpus's tapes was released on July 10th, not long after The Walton Files 2, so everybody was fiending for more FNAF VHS content. However, Walton Files 3 would prove to be a very long development cycle. You see, at some point along the way, the computer with all the Walton Files 3 content on it sort of died. And as Martin Walls says himself, 50% of The Walton Files 3 was just erased like that. Things were going to be delayed. But in between Walton Files 2 and Walton Files 3, there was plenty of other content being released that wasn't quite canon or related. The Mysterious House, the commercial, which I did a voice for, and a bunch of other really great content that is surprising to me that these were side projects. I guess that was probably foreshadowing for how big and high quality The Walton Files 3 was going to be. On March 19th, 2021, The Walton Files 3 was released clocking in at almost an hour long, 58 minutes and 55 seconds. B -b 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 -bunny, funny, 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 So, Bunny Farm. The main concept behind this tape is that it's a screen recording of a beta version of the Bonds Burgers video arcade game. The player, Sophie Walton. Through her playthrough, we learn that Sophie's medication, pills, have been making her forget about her childhood. The glitches in the beta version of the game keep bringing up old memories of events and people that she didn't remember, even though they were her close family. 
The game, clearly haunted or tampered with, is drudging up old memories and essentially telling her the story of her own horrific childhood. How Jack and Felix came together to create Bond's Burgers, how she had two other siblings, how Felix's drinking problem tore his marriage apart, and how the horrific end of her mother and father led to her taking this medication to make her forget about it all. Now, there is a lot still up for debate as to what exactly happened and who is exactly to blame for Jack and Rosemary, his wife and Sophie's mother, death. Personally, I'm thinking Felix has something to do with it, but there is something spelled out really clearly in this tape that makes me realize that Felix didn't start as some evil mastermind. See, at the end of this tape and the hidden tape attached to this one, we learn a bit more about Sophie's siblings and Felix's drinking habits. Sophie and her parents are going to be busy one night, but her two younger siblings need to be dropped off and then picked up for a school party. So Jack calls on Felix. Felix is hesitant, but eventually obliges. He drives them there, and ends up drinking heavily while he's there. On their way back, he's completely drunk and Felix crashes the car. He survives, but unfortunately, the two children don't. It's emphasized here that he never wanted to hurt them, and it fills him with guilt. Unable to bear the thought of telling Jack what happened, he buries their bodies right by St. Juana's forest, and stops taking Jack's calls. Exactly what becomes of Jack, Rosemary, and Felix between now and later on in the tapes isn't exactly clear, but we learn what becomes of Sophie's siblings. Their spirits possess a doll they carried with them. And finally, that old line is solved. We finally start to remember that old doll. They will be back for you soon. So, what do I personally think happened to Jack, Rosemary, and Felix? Well, I feel pretty confident about what I said in my previous videos. Felix did away with them. But now we know why. It wasn't just to take the fame of Bond's burgers. Felix really did care about his friend Jack and his family. But if this news got out, it would end Felix's life. All that he had worked for. So, he killed them. And while doing research for this video, I found a really interesting point uh, from WowMan212. Now that Sophie is starting to remember what happened, she's a loose end. And maybe Felix is coming for her next. Now, don't put money on this, but I think it's even possible that her medication is being given to her by Felix in some way. There are some plot holes with that theory, but clearly there's a reason Felix didn't kill Sophie, but did the others. I'm not 100% sure. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So there you go, Walton Files 3, Bunny Farm. Like I said, I'm not going back to exclusively covering Five Nights at Freddy's VHS videos. Uh, it's just, the Walton Files is so unique and high quality, and this was such a big event in my community that I feel like I had to talk about it. Obviously, if you haven't, you should check it out because it's extremely high quality and there was a lot of time put into it uh, by Martin and the whole team. Until then, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, suggest what I should cover next on my Twitter, and you should also follow me there because that's when I announce when I'll be streaming at twitch.tv forward slash Sagan Hawks. See you all next time. Thank you to the patrons for supporting the channel.